Hello, and thanks for listening to my presentation on scenario-based activities and role-playing games in large classrooms. You know, games can be a great way to get students to practice speaking and also to think outside the box, but it can be a challenge to implement games that promote creativity in a large classroom setting. So today, I hope I can give you some methods for doing just that. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Eric Flynn, and I work at GIGE, the Gyeonggi-do Institute for Global Education. Prior to this, I taught English to Korean secondary students for about 12 years, and during this time, I developed a number of activities and methods that I like passing on to other teachers. So first, what is a scenario-based activity? Well, this is a thinking exercise and role-playing game where an instructor presents students with imaginary situations and possibly some imaginary tools to help them deal with it. Then the students have to express how they would handle the situation. Most people are familiar with the desert island activity where learners are asked to choose from a variety of items such as a phone, matches, rope, etc. and must express how they intend to use their chosen items to survive or escape the island. This is a basic example of a scenario-based activity. Now, these activities are great because they're fun for students and teachers, they encourage creative thinking skills, and develop language fluency. One problem, though, is that it can be difficult to play with a full classroom of 20 to 40 students. Well, I've developed a method for doing this that I'm going to run you through. Before you do anything, though, you need to create your game. And the first step of this is to think of a theme. Players could be trapped on a desert island. They could be in a dungeon full of monsters. They could be managing a K-pop band. Maybe they're the leaders of a make-believe country. Whatever you choose, make sure that you design it so all players in a team work as a unit. They decide and act as an entire group. If you're playing a game set in a dungeon, for example, you might want to put each team in charge of a single hero or group avatar. This way, you only have to deal with around 5 to 8 decisions rather than 30. Next, you need to think of scenarios for your players to contend with. If you have a space-themed game, maybe players are attacked by aliens. Maybe their ship is low on fuel. Maybe they have to navigate a meteor storm. I recommend writing this down somewhere or even making a PPT to illustrate them. Keep in mind, you only need around 5 to 10 scenarios for a 50-minute class session. Now, think of possible outcomes for those scenarios. What will happen if players try to fight the aliens? What will happen if they try to negotiate with them? Of course, your players will always think of solutions that will surprise you, and you can't predict all of them. So be ready to think quickly and on the fly. Also important, avoid outcomes that kill or permanently remove teams from the game. This will result in idle players, which reduces their learning time. To ensure that everyone stays a part of the game, I recommend keeping score and adding or subtracting points for successes and failures. Next, make a list of items for players to choose. This actually isn't mandatory, but it offers some personalization and fun to the game. Try to think of items that complement your scenarios. In our space example, supercharged thrusters, a force field, lasers, or valuable trading supplies might be a good fit. Finally, before you play the game, you need to schedule the right time to play, which is the biggest hurdle with this activity. In a class of about 30 to 40 people, you'll only be able to get through a handful of scenarios within 50 minutes. That's without explaining the rules, etc., so I recommend setting aside one and a half or two class sessions for this game. Alternatively, you could gamify it and make it an ongoing game with a few scenarios played at the end of each month. It also makes a good activity for English clubs, or as we call them in Korea, summer and winter camps. All right, so now it's time to play your game with your students. So first, give a brief introduction to the game. Next, place your students into groups. Give them a list of the items and have them choose which ones they want for their team. Only give them about 5 to 10 minutes for this, or they'll take forever. As they choose, record each team's selections on the board so you and everyone else can keep track. Now they're ready for the scenarios. Choose, or have players choose, 
a scenario and present it to the class. You might want to use a PPT for visualization, but it isn't necessary. Then give the players a few minutes and only a few, you don't have much time, to discuss with their team how to tackle this scenario. Another note, generally I recommend prohibiting teams from interacting with other teams, attacking, stealing, etc. If you allow these choices, the game will quickly devolve into an imaginary battle royale among players, effectively killing the game's spirit of lateral thinking and creativity. All right, so when time is up, each team presents their solution to the scenario. Now, important, don't reveal the outcomes until all the teams have presented their solutions. Once each team has presented, address the results of each team's actions in order, giving points when necessary. Note that this does require a bit of memory on your behalf. And that's it. Go back to step one and repeat the process until it's time to finish. Again, you will have to think on your feet. Teams will often come up with interesting or just plain silly solutions. How strict you want to be is up to you. Generally, if learners have creative ideas, give them the benefit of the doubt. Also, if you want to add a bit of objectivity or luck, you can try using dice in your game too. Good use of items, creativity, or good English can give bonuses to the player's dice rolls. This will give your game more of an RPG or board game feel. Uh, typing virtual dice in Google will give you some helpful tools for this. There are many other ways to do these activities. Some teachers have students write answers instead of speaking, for example. There are also different ways to score teams. So feel free to think of your own flair to add to these games. Anyway, if that was helpful, please check out the Gyeonggi-do Institute of Global Education for other ways we can help you. Thanks for listening.